Hey everyone, it's David Trusivi here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at grain and how we can add it back into our video after we've denoised it in order to make it look as natural and as great as possible. Now grain is great in digital video for a couple of reasons. For starters, when you're working with very high resolution video, especially 4K and greater, grain helps a lot in sort of getting rid of some of those harsh details. Actresses' faces and other things like that will very much benefit from grain in order to sort of smooth out the image and give us a little bit more of an organic look like 35mm as we've gotten used to over years of production. Additionally, grain helps with compression. It helps to get rid of some of the banding and other issues you see with heavily compressed web videos. So looks aside, grain is a great technical tool in order to get smaller file sizes or better compression at the same file sizes. It's a great tool and there's a couple of ways to do it within Resolve, so we'll take a look at it. Now what I have right here is a clip from August Alcina's new video, Song Cry, directed by Payne Lindsay and shot by Christian Zuniga. It just came out, you should check it out. Now this clip was shot right as the sun was setting and things were getting dark and Christian had to really crank up the ASA in order to get the shot. So when we take a look at this shot, we've got a lot of noise in it here. As we play through, you can see how just how bad this noise is, especially in his face here. This ugly chroma noise is not something we want. So what we want to do is sort of break this shot down into a couple things. We want to apply the grade, we want to denoise it, and then we want to regrain afterwards in order to help with compression and sort of make sure his skin doesn't turn too plasticky after heavy denoising. So I've already done the grade, so here's our basic grade, you know, and as we brought the values up, you can see just how bad this noise is, especially down here, and again in his face. It's really ugly noise and uh, lots of chroma, so that won't do it all. So I've gone and already denoised it here. So this is using Neat Video V4, the OFX plugin within Resolve, and you can see we've got a very smooth, no noise at all, but his skin turns sort of plastic and featureless, the background looks sort of fake, and we've got a lot of, you know, sharp details that we want to smooth out. Things like his glasses here that could really benefit from some grain. And you can even see right here, just in this preview, a little bit of banding going on here. So we got to get rid of that, and we definitely need some grain added. Here's the final shot we ended up with. Now there's two easy ways to do grain. You can use either scanned grain that you apply over, or you can just generate a grain within Resolve. Because this video was on such a tight deadline, I ended up using the grain generator within Film Convert, the OFX plugin that I load just straight into Resolve. Now, I've talked about Film Convert briefly in the past, and it's something that I'm not super crazy about, especially with some of the LUTs they have. And like I've mentioned before, it does not work at all if you're working in an ASUS space, it clips your highlights. But uh, this is not an ASUS project, this is a regular project, and so what we're going to do is load up Film Convert. You want to turn off Film Color and Curve, so you're only affecting the grain. Go down here, make sure we're working on GPU. And so now there's really only two things that you have to worry about here. So you've got your film size, and then you've got your grain power. And now I found that by default the grain power is really over the top. I end up working normally around 45, so let's just go ahead and turn that down. Additionally, I like a little bit larger grain than this 35, this tight full frame, so let's drop down to 35.3 perf. And you can see we've got a pretty nice grain already here, and if we just play it, and there we go, that's looking pretty good. And so this is off and on. The effect, especially over compression on YouTube, is pretty subtle, but you can hopefully see, especially down here, how this helps with some of the banding issues here, and gives his face a little bit of character that we lost when there was no grain. So let's go ahead and play it. Looking good. And that's it. So that's a very quick, easy way to do it. Now there's a lot of options in here. You can select different sizes and stuff. You can drop down to 16 millimeter. Now when you're working with these 16 millimeter grains, you can see there's some softening going on. Uh, this becomes especially apparent as you drop to super eight and then eight millimeter, how much blur is going on beyond just the grain itself. So let me turn the grain off here. And you can see a little bit of blurring like around here. And this is one of the tools that we use with Too Many Cooks sort of to push it back and make it look a little bit more retro. But you're safe sticking with any of these four 35 options. I like 3Perf and Academy. That's what I typically use if I'm working with really high res stuff, maybe a full frame. Set the grain somewhere between about 35 and about 50, depending on how grainy of a look you want. And very quickly, you've got a nice grain on it that's easy to work with and customize shot to shot as necessary. But, you know, this is a plugin. We don't all want to have to buy a plugin, especially when there's great free resources out there with scanned grains and software that's able to generate grain very accurately. And so let's take a look at how to overlay grain on top of this within Resolve. And now, there's two ways to do this, and one way is really bad, but I see it recommended a lot. So let me switch my layout here to single screen so you can see what I'm doing. And so what I've gone is over to this Media tab, 
And uh, I've got my grain here, and so I've done it in two different ways. So let me go ahead and imp import this grain right here. And I'm just going to drag it straight in. Okay, so this is the grain we'll be adding. We'll go to the edit timeline and, you know, drop this on or add our video track and just drop it straight on. And so here we go. We've got this big long thing in here, and we'll cut this. You can see it's overlaying it. Let me switch back to my... Uh, and so we've got this overlaying our video, you know, if you turn it off, you can see it. And so what we want to do now is just go over here to the uh, compositing options and switch to overlay and turn the opacity down. And, you know, here we go. Now we've got grain on our image and it looks bad and it made everything big. But this is the method I see a lot of people recommending on YouTube and stuff. And this is not a good way to do it. For a number of reasons. One, if your grain is in the right size, you have to keep, you know, copy and pasting this over and over for it to be the, the length of your project, and that's just not efficient. And two, you know, it's brightening up your video and stuff, and it's just, it's not a good way to do it. So let's go ahead and delete that. And uh, let me show you the way that I prefer to. So let's switch this back to single screen. And let's go over here to our media. So let me go ahead and delete this. Okay, so I, this is my grain bin right here, and so this is a grain I've already added earlier as an example, but we'll go ahead and add this 4K 5219v2. Now what this is, is a generated grain out of Nuke of Kodak 5219. It's built off of, of Kodak grain scans that Nuke then interpolates, and you can make as long as you need to. Um, a friend cooked this up for me, it's like 8 seconds long, and uh, it's 24p 4K. I'll upload this file somewhere so you can get this if you're looking for grain, but there are plenty of great grain scans available out there for free. And additionally, there are plenty available for pay. Things like Gorilla Grain and others are all great options in terms of getting scanned grain. So what we want to do is not just go ahead and drag this straight in. We want to take this, right-click it, and add to Media Pool as a mat. And you'll see why in a second. So you can see the difference here. Mats have these little symbols in the corner showing the, you know, a vignette-looking mat, uh, as opposed to, you know, audio or whatever. So... We know we've added this as a map, and we can't with it, you know, just drag it in because it doesn't work that way. So what we do now is we go to color, and so we've got our shot here that we want to grain. So let's let's make a couple nodes, and we'll pretend, you know, that uh, this was our primary, and this was our secondary, and now we want to add grain. So we'll add another one, and we'll call this grain mixer. Okay, and what we want to do now is uh, add another node. We want to add a layer node, that's Alt-L. And so we'll name this one Grain Control. And what we want to do, okay, is uh, take this little connector here and delete it. So just hit this, delete link, boom, okay. So right now, if we do things to this, you know, let me crank uh, the contrast word. You can see it's not doing anything at all. So let's turn that back down. So this, at the moment, is not affecting anything in your timeline. What we want to do is use this node here to control the grain we're about to bring in. So we'll right-click this, add mat, track mats down here, and you can see the grain I brought in earlier and this one we just added. So 4K 5219V2, click it, okay? And so now we've got this other node here with this line here. We'll delete this link and then drag this little circle up to here. And now, boom, okay, so everything is grained here. You know, we can see this, this is not what we want, but don't worry, we'll fix this in just a second. Now, first things first, this is a 4K grain scan here. And as you can play, you can see the grain is very tight and detailed, but maybe I want the grain to be a little bit bigger. And even worse, you can see up here and down here, the grain doesn't quite fill the whole frame. There's a little bit of blanking on the top and bottom, so we'll need to fix that. Now, if you go and you just sort of, you know, try and zoom in on this, you'll see, oh no, this doesn't work. What you need to do is uncheck this lock mat box. And when you do that, you can zoom in, you can make it as big as you want, there we go. Now, one thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure you're zooming in on this grain on this track, because if you zoom in over here, and I'll give you just a quick preview of what we're gonna be looking at, you'll see immediately that it affects the entire image, and that's not something we want. So you have to go here, and you have to uncheck lock mat and zoom in within this external mat control, okay? And uh, you also want to make sure that this loop button is checked. And this loop button is the magic thing. You can take 
any sort of grain sample here, you know, if it's only a couple frames long, if it's only a couple seconds long and your shot is longer, it doesn't matter because this loop will keep the mat looping as long as the clip is, which means you can use any length grain and you don't have to worry about trimming each grain to each shot, which is a huge help. Okay, so we've got this set up here. And uh, so now, you know, we've got everything here. It's black. We don't have our blinking anymore. So let's go ahead and activate our grain. And so we'll turn this on and switch on our layer mode, select composite mode, and select overlay. Great, so now I can see we've got grain, but it's brightening up our shot and uh, the grain's a little bit hard to see. So how do we fix this? Very simple, we'll go down to grain control and uh, with this particular uh, grain, you'll wanna turn the luma of the gain down to 0.69. So let's blow that up. You can see now when I turn it off and on, the grain is there, but we're not affecting the brightness of our shot at all. So we're just getting grain. Great, that's easy. And uh, there you go, that's it. Now we've got grain. And now there's a couple different things we can do to sort of enhance this grain or, or to customize it to whatever we need it to do. And we do that all in this grain control thing. So just like we adjusted the gain luma down here, we can also do other things to this grain. So let's take a look and jack up this contrast here. You can go really far and you can see how much that affects the grain. And so if you want a little bit more intense grain, you can increase the contrast. If you want a little less, you can turn it down. And uh, that's a great way to just quickly get the grain you want. Additionally, if you switch down to number two here, you can increase the mid-tone detail, which gives you a little bit more control without adding all that saturation and stuff that comes with increasing the contrast. And this is a great way to get heavier grain very quickly. So, and let's turn our contrast back down. And this grain is uh, not monochrome. It's got a little bit of chroma in it, which 35 millimeter grain scan does, but say you just want monochrome, you can very easily turn your saturation down here. And now we've got just monochrome grain. Easy. You can do other things in this grain control, like shift the colors of your grain, but most things are gonna affect the whole image, so you have to be careful what you do. Uh, even things like, uh, instead of increasing the contrast, if you were in, to try and increase the curves, you can see it affects the luma values of everything. So again, be careful what you do here. You want to do things that only affect the grain unless you're trying to do stylistic controls as well. Okay, cool thing about this too is that you can go ahead and uh, see, you know, if we created just these clips, you know, and you wanted to create a new version real quick and delete this too. And now you've got just your grain controls in one option. So you can go ahead and save this. And let me switch this over. So you can go ahead and save this as a look. So now I've got this, and we can very quickly apply grain here. And let's say we already had a look or something. You know, we've got this cool night look going on here. And we wanted to add grain to this shot. We can very easily append no graph, and now we have it, our grain on here. And you can select multiple shots and to pin the node graph to that, and now they've all got extra grain. And it's just that simple, so once you've built the grain look, it's very easy to apply it. And you can even go ahead and save this to Power Grade Gallery, wherever you need to. So you can always access it as long as you've brought that grain mat back in. Let's go ahead and reset this, and that's it. So that's two ways to quickly grain your image, uh, either using a plugin, that generates grain on the fly, like Film Convert, or to use this simple node tree in order to combine a external grain, uh, the grain control, and then the overlay via a layer mixer node. And that's it, easy grain without any plugin and with plenty of free grain scans. This is David Trasivio, thanks for watching.